Hi, I'm Mary Carter, and this is the day that we are making sock puppets. We're on our back porch where all our stray socks live, and I'm trying to figure out where to look at the camera because I haven't done this for a long time. Um, but today we're making two sock puppets. Um, I did a little bit of looking, and I found out that um, socks were invented by the Egyptians. They are the ones who figured out how to do knitting um, with sticks and spun yarn. Um, and those sock patterns are still, um, you can still go to natural history museums and find uh, Egyptian socks. If you Google Egyptian socks, you will find striped children's socks and grown-up socks. They also were the ones who uh, made the patterns so that you could wear sandals with your socks. So the Egyptians are the one who started that whole thing. Um, but puppets have been around for a long time. Um, for a while in England, they were away when there was a short period of time when theater was forbidden and people used puppets to do small secret plays um, in houses. Um, you could just set up a table with a curtain and they think that sock puppets were used for these uh, small secret plays. One of the most um, famous sock puppets is Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chops. Lamb Chops was a sock puppet uh, decorated to look like a little sheep and she was on TV for m many decades. Uh, I watched her when I was a little girl. And one of the most famous characters, um, puppet characters, is Kermit the Frog. He started his life as a sock puppet. And there's an old black and white photograph you can see. Um, and there's Kermit the Frog. Um, now, uh, we're going to be making, I'm going to ask you to make two sock puppets. Um, and this is a little bit, uh, a little bit of a character uh, creation. Um, on Sesame Street, you know that there are a lot of different puppets and sometimes they look, they act just how they look. Um, Bert and Ernie, Bert is a little fussy and Ernie is more uh, happy-go-lucky and they look that way. Um, now the Grouch is another puppet. Um, he looks very, very cranky. But his closest friend is his pet worm named Slimy. He also has a girlfriend named Grungetta. Grun, yeah, Grungetta. And she sometimes, instead of calling him Oscar, she calls him Oski. Um, Oscar's best friend is Elmo. Um, so even though Oscar looks really, really cranky, he has, he has a pet and he has uh, someone that he trusts and he has a best friend. So he doesn't, he doesn't act as mean as he looks. In fact, I found out, did you know that Oscar's real color is orange? Yeah, he hasn't taken a bath for so long. Moss has grown all over him so he looks green. Um, they say that one time he got stuck in a rainstorm and all the green washed off and you could see he was orange again. Um, so he had to jump in some pond water, algae-covered pond water, and turn green again. So anyway, well, let's get to the sock puppet. Um, I'm hoping you have um, one or two stray socks. Now, the easiest, the, what's, uh, the main parts of our sock puppet are the eyes, the hair, and the mouth. There's two ways to do the mouth. There's many different ways to do the eyes, and there's a whole lot of different ways to do the hair. Um, let's start with the mouth. Um, this is basically, I'm going to show you just a regular sock. This is um, one of my old running socks. Um, and you'll notice that there's a heel and the toe. Now, uh, so this is one way to do the mouth. You put your hand, uh, your fingers in the toe, and you put your thumb in the heel. And that's how you make the mouth. And then we put a piece of cardboard in between here, and you that's basically all there is to it. I'm going to show you a picture of the sock puppet my sister made um, to kind of have fun with my brother-in-law. Uh, my brother-in-law made a sock puppet for his marble making show, and my sister made him a puppet to match. And while I'm talking here, you can see the picture of her puppet. Okay, now the other way to do the mouth is to not put your thumb in the um, heel, 
but just to put it in the, just do both of them in the toe. Now, this has got a gray toe, so it's hard to kind of see that. Um, here's a colored sock. And when you do that, you have more, it kind of looks like a snake's head. But um, because there's no cardboard part there, um, you can make a very, very expressive mount. And that's about it. So in its most simplest form, um, I can just put my thumb in the heel, my fingers in the toe, and then I can take a pen or a marker and draw eyes and I have a puppet. That is basically all there is to it. Now, I'll show you some other ways, uh, some things to add. Okay, so on this puppet, I drew his eyes and I drew some frowny eyebrows. To add the mouth, um, I took a cereal box, uh, wheat checks. We don't have little kids at home anymore, so we have boring cereals. Um, but the the card, uh, cereal boxes make really great cardboard because they're not too hard to cut out. They cut out very, very easily with scissors. And I cut out an oval. Now, some people score um, fold this in half and they have a mouth like that. And you can do that. Um, all I have to do is glue this in the seam. Um, let me see how what kind of mouth that would make. I could, I could, if I wanted to, I could make it so that his mouth was up here. You could do that too. Depending, this probably is a little bit big, and if I wanted to do it that way, I would cut it down just a little, make it a little bit narrower. Um, a lot of, a lot of how you do the mouth depends on how big your own hand is. So if you have a smaller hand, you're going to be able to have a smaller mouth. So I cut this piece to look like the letter D and I fold it in half so it looks like an egg folded in half and then I can put it in his mouth like this. Now I have several different kinds of glue here. I've got a glue stick and I have Elmer's glue um, and both seem to be working just fine today. Um, I smear this on the glue stick or smear the glue stick on the cardboard and then I put it in his mouth and ta-da we have a mouth. Now I didn't color the inside of the mouth I didn't put a tongue or teeth or anything in there um, but you could do that before you glue it in. Now let's go on to the eyes. Um, sometimes um, you have to look at what makes expressive eyes. If I open my eyes really big, the white part is really large and my pupils, the colored part of my eye is really small. If I'm sleepy, my eye is narrowed. So we can use that as a way of making a specific kind of eye. Um, I made a sock puppet yesterday that was modeled after an acid rock band. Um, when I was younger, I really liked hard rock music. I thought it was fun to listen to. That was fun to dance to. So I made a puppet um, that was modeled after a rock band. Um, so here's his mouth. Now here you can see I cut the mouth pieces apart because he's going to open his mouth really wide for singing very, very loud. But when I did his eyes, they look they look too they look too small they look too normal so i'm going to change his eyes and because i used a glue stick or white glue i just peeled them right off it, they came off really easy um so now i'm going to stick i'm going to make bigger eyes and you can see the difference in how they look so i'm mashing the glue stick on there and you can see it and then i'm going to put big eyes and instead of gluing buttons on I'm going to draw with a marker there now he looks a, z a lot zanier and when he turn flips his head 
and I don't have some rock music to play right now or I could do it. Um, so you can do eyes a lot of different ways. So that's how I did these eyes. The other way is I just glued, I just glued a button um, in a piece of white paper. Um, let's see. Oops. Um, now let's talk about the hair. Um, this hair is ribbon that I cut uh, in short lengths and I tied it together. How did I attach it to his head? Well, there's several different ways. You can glue it to the top of the head. You can poke two holes and just put the string through the holes and tie it. Or you can put, you can tie it up with a twisty tie. Um, so this is actually tied on with a ribbon and I poked um, with a pair of scissors. I poked a hole in the fabric, two holes, and then I tied the ribbon right inside there. Now, this is, I have another sock of it. Oh, I don't know where they went. Take one of my running socks. Um, if I wanted to make it so that I could exchange wigs, I could have some hair that was tied with a twisty tie here. Um, I tore up a crochet pat project that went south. There's my twisty ties. Um, now I can cut very carefully. I can cut two holes. Now how do I know where to cut the holes? Um, when my hand is inside, I can look and see, okay, here's where the eyes are going to go. I make two dots for the eyes, and then here's where my hair is going to go. And just, just go tap, tap. And that could be a pencil or a ballpoint pen. And then you can have your parent or guardian just very carefully snip two holes into the sock. There we go. And now, now all I have to do is run the twisty tie into the two holes and twist them underneath. And now he's got, she, they, have a blue wig. I think mean, he's going to be a he's going to be a drummer. He look, he has a drummer feel. Um. Okay. Um. Here's another section of hair, and it has a twisty tie, and it's even longer. Um. Let's see. Um. I made this out of string, and then I ran a comb through it. And this I could just glue to the top of my sock, too. There. Um, okay, now, some th other um, materials that I've used. Um, one is coffee filters. This is a coffee filter um, that I folded in half. And I snipped across halfway. Then I folded it in half the other way and snipped across so you can see it has a hole in the middle. And then um, I folded it back up and I cut with a scissors. I cut a fringe and now this brown sock who has some eyes already. This brown sock is going to be my lion. There we go. Now I have a lion's mane around around the line. And I added inside the mouth, instead of a letter D placed, I cut out some teeth from the corner fold. Um, a box of cereal has these very short lengths that fold inside and they make great teeth. Um, I'm ripping open the bottom of this uh, cereal box and you can see these tabs. So if you cut that off, There we go. 
this single fold, I can make jagged teeth. Now this might be something you'd want your guardian or an older brother or sister to cut out for you. And I'm cutting them zigzag up and down, up and down to leave really jagged teeth. There. And now I could glue them underneath here. Now my thumb is smaller, so to make that fit better, I'm going to cut this where I'm gluing the glued base. I'm going to make it narrower. Oopsie, oops, there goes my glue stick. Um, so they come together like that. Um, Elmer's glue is amazing. It does everything. Who doesn't like Elmer's glue? There we go. Now, if I wanted to get real creative, I could cut this sock and add a red tongue or an orange tongue to it. So, um, the eyes, by the way, his eyes, I cut on the back of the cereal box um, where some red coloring was going across the back of the box and I turned those into eyes and I just filled them in with a red pen. So this is my, this is my lion with really sharp looking de teeth. This is my punk rocker with wild colored hair. Um, I'm going to show you one other, one other design. Um, we are huge fans of um, Fiddler on the Roof. And if you have a bandana or a scarf, let's see, I cut some hair. Where is her hair? Um, I cut the sleeve. I cut the sleeve off of a t-shirt and fringed the edge. So now this puppet has gray hair. She's a little old lady. And when I put a scarf around her head, there, now she has a babushka. Oy vey. Um, you can also use bandanas to dress them up. Um, you can add hats and feathers. And I haven't even I haven't even brought up the idea of aliens or space monsters. That'd be a whole other thing. Um, pipe cleaners, straws, anything that you can glue with white glue or a glue stick will stay on the fabric of the sock. So um, this is it. So we learned how to do eyes, two different ways to do a mouth, and many many different ways to do hair. You can glue the hair right to the head of the sock puppet, or you can use a twisty tie and cut two holes and twist it in so you can exchange wigs. We learned that the Egyptians invented knitting and they invented, invented socks and wearing socks with sandals. Um, and everybody has enjoyed socks ever since then. Um, I don't know how to knit socks, but I watched someone do it and it's incredible how how hard it is to knit a sock. Um, we learned about some famous sock puppets, Lamb Chops and Sherry Lewis, who uh, was a ventriloquist who used, um, who voiced Lamb Chops, and you can look her up on Google, and then Kermit the Frog, who started Alpha Life as a sock puppet. And then we talked about sometimes characters look like, they act like what they look like, and then sometimes characters, sock, or sock puppet, sock puppets, have a personality that's different from what they look like. Um, so you can make two puppets and have a story. Now for a good plot there usually is some conflict. Uh, someone wants to do something and the other person doesn't want that to happen and that conflict makes for an interesting story. Um, so I hope you share your sock puppets with me. Um, you can mail them to the Gmail address that's on the YouTube channel. Um, and our Facebook page, Chirp Chirp Creations, Chirp Chirp Creations, there's a Gmail address there. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what sock puppets you do. Um, if you have um, a smartphone, 
you can actually record a short play, which would be amazing. Um, I'll put I'll post a link to the parody bands uh, invented by uh, I think it's uh, based on a radio station, but I'll give you I'll put a link to that on our Facebook page. They're very fun to watch. Um, one of the parody bands is the Beatles. So, okay. Well, I look forward to seeing your sock puppets. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.